Hi kitties, do you remember me? I'm Nancy Kiss. We used to hang out together, stream and talk about healthy food, but it ended when my ex-nanny Lena started adding high-energy supplements to my food and I grew wide. She did this for me and my son. A family is a family and it needs to keep together. Now Leo has grown up and I return to you. Keep an eye on the news. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. I stopped the stream. How hard is it to start from the beginning? No one can enter the same river twice and I need a fresh idea, a new genre. What if I created kind of family fitness blog with mom, dad and baby hosting a channel? That's a hype topic. But that won't be easy. I need to find not only a boyfriend, but a father for Leo. Not everyone is ready for such a responsibility. I headed to the nearest gym. Sure enough, guys started trying to get to know me, but just as they opened their mouths, I understood this wasn't going to work. The guys were totally unable to talk. Some even couldn't put two words together. What did I do with them in a stream? My followers would laugh at me. My phone signaled a couple of times. Wow, in the comments to the stream there were lots of messages asking to tell about the new project. They were really curious. Yes, <laughs> folks remember me. I must find a guy as soon as possible. Then I noticed a nice boy heading to the exit. His body was great and he looked intelligent. I came to say hi and he even shuddered. Huh? Why so scared, Kitty? His name was Greg. We started talking and understood he was the one I was looking for. He was funny, joking much, and he told me about space, about history. He was so diverse, not a typical bodybuilder at all. He really was smart and he seemed just ideal. Seemed he liked me too, but he didn't even ask my phone number, so I had to act myself. The next day we went to train together. I hoped to see a master class, after which I planned to offer Greg to host the new show together. He went for the dumbbells and brought… <gasps> What's that? One kilo! Are you joking? But Greg said he had his own unique program and his training started with the most gentle muscle warm-up. Have you really created your own program? And is there any result? Greg passed his hand over his pecs and winked. I really wanted to touch his chest too, but he recoiled and muttered, sorry, I'm not used to be touched. Oh, come on, Greg, honestly speaking, I'd squeeze you gladly, you are so sweet. Let's go to my place? He suddenly whitened and then replied uncertainly, he had some urgent matters. Uh, okay, fine, then come tomorrow, this is my home address. I'll wait you to come at 6 p.m. We will stream together and you'll tell about your unique program. Deal? Great! Hi, kitties! I have two great news! Firstly, I found a dream guy who's built a perfect body. And secondly, he'll come just now and tell you about his exclusive training program so that all of you could have the same results. You'll love it, I promise! Oh my gosh, it was 7 p.m. already, but Greg still hadn't shown up. My followers started doubting I had a boyfriend after all. And then I'd made my mind. Hey, finally! He'll come right now and you will all be astounded. Right after this, I stopped the stream. I'll write in the chat later that my phones died. I was furious! How could he fail me like that? Suddenly I saw something appeared in the window. Balloons? Flowers? Oh, how sweet! There was a huge card saying, I'm so sorry, let's go to this restaurant, I'll explain everything, and an address below. I immediately forgave Greg and in half an hour we were chatting already. It turned out that sports nutrition gave Greg a terrible indigestion and he couldn't leave the toilet for two hours. That's awful! And don't you want to ask me for a dance? Greg lowered his eyes and replied he couldn't dance at all. Or maybe you are just shy, I asked playfully. <laughs> I felt so attracted to him and the aroma of his perfume just drove me crazy. 
I couldn't resist it, moved closer and reached to Greg, but he withdrew abruptly, claiming he wasn't ready for this at all, and it was too early, as we'd just met. What century are you from, Greg? Surely not from this one. Well, okay, let's just think you are the last living gentleman, some kind of knight. Now I have to go. I wait for you tomorrow at the stream, and if you don't show up, you might forget my phone number. My sweeties, yesterday my phone died and we were interrupted on the most intriguing spot. But today it all happens, the first day of a super marathon that'll change your body forever. Wanna take part? Then like and share the link with your friends, so that they could join us too. Let's do this together! Where on earth is he? I'd been streaming for half an hour already and I had no idea how to kill the time further. I tried distracting the viewers with some unrelated topics until someone commented, you are just lying again as with your super diet, I'm off. The viewers started living massively and drowned me in dislikes. I threw my phone on the floor furiously and it broke into pieces. That's it, my patience ran out. Beware, Greg! I took a taxi to his house. Good I'd glimpsed into his documents in the restaurant when he went to the bathroom. As I'd arrived, I decided to look through a window first, and what I saw just shocked me. A guy went out from the shower and he was scrawny as I don't know what. And worst of all, he was wearing only a towel. I felt electrified, understanding everything. Greg is gay. That's why he eluded getting closer with me. I was boiling with anger. Well, you'll get some now. Then the guy in the window turned and I saw he had Greg's face. What? Is this skeleton him? Greg opened the wardrobe and disappeared behind its unit door. I stormed into the house and saw Greg coming my way, but this time wearing some kind of a silicon overall. He looked as muscular as always. I froze. What the hell is happening here? Greg asked what was I doing at his home and how did I even find it. I claimed I'd seen everything and demanded an explanation. Greg said he was scrawny all his life and dreamt about gaining weight because girls never took him seriously and guys made fun of him. He went to the gym to train, but was afraid the bodybuilders would laugh at him, so he bought this silicon overall imitating a muscular body. And during his very first training, he met me. Greg confessed he really liked me, but he didn't have courage to tell me the truth earlier. I didn't even know how to reply. Hi, kitties! This is Nancy Kiss. We are starting an unprecedented marathon, from a skeleton to a beefcake. Look at my boyfriend Greg, he's all skin and bones. But with healthy food and training, we'll turn him into a cutie bodybuilder. Give us likes and repost this video. Lots of cool stuff ahead. Stay tuned. Did you like the video? Subscribe and give us a like. Support our channel. Thank you. I stood in the church and couldn't believe this was happening to me. I was marrying a dwarf. Calm down. You need to be patient a little. I get the lead role and I get divorced right away, and it's good for the dwarf. His name is Nick. He is a famous director, but no one gave him money for a new project. Then, his rich mother offered to pay for the shooting, but only if the son gets married. Just recently, I graduated from the theater institute and immediately waited for the main roles, but they only called me as an extra. And when the dwarf offered me a deal, a movie role in exchange for a fake wedding, I immediately agreed. As soon as the ceremony was over, I saw a missed call from Dylan, my real boyfriend. We met on the set, and it was love at first sight. God, I don't want Dylan to know what I'm up to. He's a real nutcase. I lied to the guests that I needed to get some air and went outside. Just as I was about to call, someone called out to me. I almost dropped my phone in fright, but when I turned around, I saw the dwarf. Nick thanked me for my help, and then we heard a click of heels. Nick's mother, Helen, came up to us. Hell, what if she heard us and realized that the marriage was a sham? But my mother-in-law smiled and said that we were a very beautiful couple. I immediately sat down and hugged Nick. Yes, we are perfect for each other. My mother-in-law nodded approvingly and asked what we were planning for our honeymoon. Nick and I looked at each other blankly. 
Immediately, she offered not to go anywhere and spend it in their luxurious mansion. Real family life, isn't it great? I was really scared. What mansion? I have a shoot. And if his mother suspects a trick? Nick looked flustered and gave his mom a confused thank you. There was no choice. I also played along. Right after the wedding, we went to the mansion. I hope it won't last long. But when I saw the house, I gasped. His mother clearly had money. She led us to our bedroom. After all, a husband and wife should live together. To sleep next to a dwarf? I was furious. But there was no choice. We needed this money for the movie. After a while, my mother-in-law called us into the kitchen and said that we would cook dinner together, like a real family. But I couldn't stand cooking. It was easier to order sushi. I whispered this to Nick, to which he replied that he was also a complete zero in cooking. Love is known in the kitchen. The mother-in-law joked viciously. While I was chopping onions and crying, Nick was trying to lighten the mood. And he started chuckling carrots. What a weirdo. I even thought it was funny. Suddenly, my phone vibrated. The screen flashed, sweetheart. I almost had a heart attack. What if his mother sees? I grabbed the phone, nearly knocking over the frying pan. I promised Dylan I'd meet him today. Come on, you're an actress. I slapped my forehead and said I needed to go to an important casting call. His mother gave me a suspicious look, but I had already called a taxi. Dylan was already waiting for me at the restaurant. When I arrived, he asked Hartley why I wasn't wearing a dress. After all, he liked my figure. I kissed my beloved and apologized. There was no time to choose an outfit. Dylan frowned, but then he took my hand. And he said he wanted to move in with me. Oh, I've been waiting for this for so long. But now I almost held in frustration. Dylan didn't know I'd move in with the dwarf for a month. I had to lie that I was now living with my sick aunt who needed to be taken care of. Dylan didn't say anything and only asked me to pay when the bill arrived. He forgot his wallet. Could happen to anyone. He offered to drop me off. I felt guilty for not agreeing to move in. So I nodded. He would take me to the mansion and then I would figure something out. When we arrived, I asked him to slow down. My aunt needed to rest. We shouldn't wake her up. We said our goodbyes in a hurry, and I dashed into the house. If only no one would see. In the dark, I couldn't get the key into the lock. Finally, I did it. I was almost to the bedroom when the lights came on. My mother-in-law was standing in front of me in a nightgown. She stared at me reproachfully. Where have you been for so long? I blurted out the first thing that came to my mind. I was just going for a run. A wife should keep herself in shape. My mother-in-law narrowed her eyes. In that case, she would be happy to keep me company. What? She quickly changed her clothes and we ran. I was hoping she'd just run out of steam. But no, my mother-in-law passed me and I was barely able to walk. After our run, I was so exhausted that I barely made it to bed. Nick decided to sleep on the floor for which I was grateful. But a couple of hours later, my mother-in-law knocked on the door. I jumped up and started waking Nick up. She can't see that we're sleeping apart. His mother was already turning the doorknob. There was nothing to do. I grabbed sleepy Nick and dragged him to the bed with all my strength. At that moment, Helen came into the room. My mother-in-law looked at us sharply and then suddenly announced that she had another surprise. Again? I was tired of her surprises. She handed over some certificates and said, Family life is not only a routine, but also a joint experience. We're going to jump with a parachute. Nick yawned, and I broke out in a sweat. I was scared to death of heights. But Nick whispered, we don't spend much time together. Your mother-in-law will suspect something. You can't refuse. We gathered and waited for his mother. But after a couple of minutes, she came out and said that her plans had changed. We would have to go ourselves. Was she kidding us? Nick noticed that I was worried, and he tried to lighten the mood all the way. Okay, maybe it was not so scary, but when I saw the helicopter where we were supposed to jump from, I found it hard to breathe. I don't want to go there. Suddenly, Nick put his arm around me and gently asked me what was going on, and I admitted that I was very afraid of heights. But Nick said it was okay. Anyway, why would we do that if mom was not here? But she said to spend time together. That's what we'll do. Nick said with a sly smile. We spent the rest of the day at the amusement park. Nick tried to cheer me up, bought me cotton candy, and joked about everything. Even about his small stature, to which I replied he had a huge soul. And then I stumbled. 
I used to be repelled by Nick's appearance, but today I never thought about it. It turned out that he was caring, kind, and had a lot to talk about. When we returned home, laughing, I even thought my mother-in-law smiled at the sight of us. In the evening, we chatted for a long time, and then Nick said that he was having fun with me. But he used to feel lonely. That's understandable. I'm a dwarf, he continued. But I protested. That's not the point. I also often feel sad, but everything is fine with my stature. And I wondered, why did I say that? I have a boyfriend, Dylan. Then I realized that I never had a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with him like this. The thought terrified me. I said goodnight to Nick and turned back to the wall. The next day, Nick and I went grocery shopping on his mother's behalf. And when we got back, my jaw almost dropped. <gasps> my mother-in-law was sitting with Dylan, drinking tea. What's happening? I didn't understand, but Dylan came up to me and put his arm around me and said he was very happy to meet my aunt. Then he kissed me on the cheek and added, I wish you dwarf to find a girl like my beauty. This was a failure. I looked at my mother-in-law in horror. She told me to get out of there with my boyfriend. Nick was silent. Tears began to well up in my eyes. I was so close to crying, and Dylan still didn't know what had happened. In the street, he said that my family would calm down soon and we would be able to move, and we wouldn't even have to pay rent. While I was trying to collect my thoughts, he called us a taxi. We drove in silence, but on arrival, Dylan again asked me to pay. He said he forgot his wallet again. It was like a slap in my face. Wait, are you dating me just so I can pay for you everywhere? Dylan chuckled. Well, it certainly wasn't because of my personality. In tears, I shouted that we were breaking up. How could I ever love this jerk? I went back to my apartment and cried for a long time. Something snapped inside me, but I was awakened by the rumbling of my own stomach. I had to go to the store. Out of habit, I went to the department of semi-finished products, but suddenly stopped in front of the shelf with onions. Remembering how we cooked with the whole family, I'll beat fake. God, did I miss them? But at home, I couldn't eat a morsel. Nick would definitely support me right now. The thought of him warmed my heart. Why did I think about him so often? Then my phone vibrated. It was Nick. I picked up the phone and was about to apologize when he excitedly informed me that my mother-in-law was in the hospital. I jumped. What happened? Nick muttered that she had a heart problem, that her last wish was to see me. There was no time to think, so I rushed to the hospital. My mother-in-law was unconscious and Nick was sitting by her bed, looking sad. He looked at me and said with a sad smile that he was sorry it had ended like this. We were a happy family though not a real one. But he understood me. I had a boyfriend. Normal, not a dwarf. A lump froze in my throat. I'm sorry, it's all my fault. Nick, you know if we could start over, it would be different. He was about to say something, but then my mother-in-law moved. We jumped in surprise, and she smiled and cheerfully got up from the bed. What's happening? His mother laughed. Since everyone was here, there was no need to stay in the hospital. We were going home. Nick and I looked at each other blankly. Then his mother admitted that she pretended to be ill in order to unite the family. You actors can pretend to be married, but I can't be an actress? She added that she was sure from the very beginning that Nick and I were made for each other. I looked at Nick, smiling, and everything fell into place. As we drove home, I felt happy for the first time in a long time. I had a family, a home, a real husband who really needed me. On the way, Nick received a text message, and he suddenly broke into a smile. There were investors who were ready to finance his movie. His mother's money was no longer needed. He looked at me and asked if I would play the lead role in the movie. I was happy, but after thinking about it, I said that I would go to the casting, like everyone else, and I winked. If our family doesn't mind a working life, but it wasn't the role that made me happy that night. I looked at Nick and saw him not as a scary dwarf, but as a loved one. It turned out that the looks can often be deceiving, but now I was definitely not fooled.